Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna take a look at this thing right here, which is the Lenovo ThinkStation P340 Tiny. This thing is super cool is because this is a Project Tiny Mini micro node that is a one liter PC. And this thing also has a GPU in it, an NVIDIA GPU. Now, if you're not familiar with Project Tiny Mini Micro, that's basically where we've been looking at these one liter PCs from Lenovo, HP, and Dell. And over the last couple of years, we've taken a look at several dozen of these machines. And so we have a pretty good idea of what all of the machines in this class do, not just from Lenovo, but from other vendors. We've taken a look, not just at this P340, but we've also taken a look at the 30 tinies, and we've definitely done a lot of these systems. So we have a really good reference point in which we can use to compare this unit to other units. Now, just in terms of pricing, let's talk about the high level configurations and pricing. I know everybody likes to just kind of know what that is. This is not the newest generation. There's a P350 Tiny, and I think there's also a P360 Tiny that Lenovo hasn't announced, but you can actually find some documentation on it. So I don't know what the status of that is, but that will be the Alder Lake generation. So this is a 10th generation Intel core based system, but it's also meant to be like a small workstation. So instead of just having a Intel core processor, we also get a discrete NVIDIA Quadro GPU. And if you're thinking, Patrick, NVIDIA doesn't use Quadro, they actually do use Quadro on their older parts. And in these kind of lower power segments, we do get usually older parts. And so this is technically still a Quadro GPU, although that name has been retired for newer parts. So overall, with a pretty high-end Core i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of memory, a half terabyte NVMe SSD, and a GPU, we managed to get this system for $840 or so on eBay. And the reason I wanted this configuration is that it compares to this new mini PC series that we have. And we actually just looked at a mini PC that had 16 gigabytes of memory. It also had a 512 gig SSD. And the current price on Amazon for that one at the time that we're recording this video and uh, well, you know, the, the pricing, of course, all this pricing all changes, but that one's actually at $799 with just an AMD Ryzen CPU, no discrete GPU. So what I wanted to do was just kind of talk about what the difference is and like, can you actually get into a discrete GPU version for about the same price? And I think that this thing answers the, well, it's not exactly the same $800, $800, it's like $40 more, but I do think that it's close enough that you would say like, you know, an $800 and $840 system are roughly comparable in terms of price. And so with that, let's get to the hardware. Now, looking at the front of the chassis, you're gonna see that we have basically three main ports. We first, we have a headset, which is a combo headset jack. The second thing that we have is two USB ports. The first port is a type A port, it's a gen two port. And so it does 10 gigabits per second. Now there is a type C port on the front of this, but that type C port is only a gen one port. So it's five gigabits per second. I kind of wish that both of these were 10 gigabits per second, but that's what we have. On the front of this, there's also the power button. On the rear of the unit, we get more USB ports. Specifically, we get two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and three USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. So we do not get USB-C on the back of these units, but that's pretty common in the industry. The other thing that you'll see is that we get our base display outputs, which is a display port and an HDMI port. And that's pretty much standard on the Lenovo Tiny series. What is different though, is that we get something that's exciting. Specifically, we get four more mini display port outputs because well, that's what's on our Nvidia GPU. Rounding out the configuration, we get our Intel i219LM NIC, as well as our Wi-Fi antenna on the back. With that though, Let's go and before we get inside the chassis, I just wanna point out something that is a little different on the outside of the chassis. And really that's just how much area is dedicated to cooling. So you can see on the this P320 here, there's no like, there are no perforations on the top of this unit, right? This is basically just a solid top. Whereas we have giant perforation on the top of the newer P340 tiny unit. And that's really just to give a lot more airflow because this thing uses a lot of power. You're gonna see why 
this may look small, but it's actually not as small as you think, just in my hand here. And I'll explain why when we get to the power section a little bit later. But I will say that even not just on the top, but also on the sides and on the rear, like even the GPU faceplate, there's definitely a lot more venting in this system because, well, it's having to cool a lot more. And that's why we see a lot more venting. The venting also means though that if you do try stacking these up on top of one another, you usually don't want to do that because you're going to restrict the airflow to this top vent and that will cause heat problems or it'll make your fans go faster, which will create more noise. And so you typically don't want to stack this type where you actually have the, you know, vent on the top. With that though, let's get inside the system and well, the first thing is, of course, the screw. The screw I've already taken out because Lenovo doesn't use thumb screws, which is a total bummer. I wish they did, but that's what it is. Now, let's open up the system here and it just pops right off like that, finally. And we get inside. And now that we're inside the system, we can definitely start to see some of the differences between this and your kind of run-of-the-mill one liter tiny mini micro PC. Specifically, well, we see that on the top, we have our CPU, which is kind of standard, but this entire cooling assembly is dedicated to just cool that CPU. And in our system, we actually have a Intel Core i7 10700T, which is an eight core, 16 thread part. It's not quite the top end in this generation because there was a Core i9, which is, it has a, it's a Core i9 10900T, also a 35 watt TDP part, but with 10 cores. In the next generation, the 11th gen, it actually went back down to eight cores. So this is basically the same core count as the 11th gen, but the 11th gen has things like PCA Gen 4, and there, there are definitely some features in the 11th gen that are cool. But at the same time, this particular system, we don't have the Core i9. We have done with them before with the Core i9, but we have the Core i7, which is still a pretty darn high-end CPU. But the big difference is that we have a PCIe slot, and it's a pretty standard-looking PCIe slot on our little riser. These risers are actually pretty hard to find. You can put them in some Lenovo systems, but they're not super easy to order after the fact. And then we actually have our NVIDIA Quadro P620 GPU. Now, this is not something that would be necessarily, like, I'm not gonna go tell you to go play competitive games on it or any anything like that. What it basically is there, it's a two gigabyte GPU. The P means it's Pascal generation, which is definitely aging at this point. But the basic idea is that it is a low power discrete GPU. And this low power discrete GPU allows you to have four additional display outputs. You can actually go and have like six display outputs just on the system if you're using both the onboard as well as the Quadro display outputs. And although the brand has been retired, you can actually see that this one says Quadro on it. Now, moving to the back of the system, we can see the next feature. And this is one feature that I really like that Lenovo does and I wish that other vendors did as well. And what you're gonna basically see is that you pop off this back part of the chassis. And then what you basically get is you get SO DIMMs and you get your storage. And so here we get two SO DIMMs. This particular system only had 16 gigabytes and we only have single channel memory. I always suggest having dual channel memory. So I will put another 16 gigabytes in this as we deploy it. And so we'll have 32 gigabytes. I also think, and we have tried by the way, two 32 gigabyte DIMMs in here. And that gives you a total of 64 gigabytes. And that's actually pretty, that's actually a pretty darn good system, right? When you have like eight cores or 10 cores, you have 64 gigabytes of memory. That's, that's pretty darn good, especially when you have a discrete GPU. The other thing that you're gonna see is that we have NVMe storage. And we don't just have one NVMe drive, we actually have two NVMe drives. Now, Lenovo's configuration with the storage on the back of the motherboard is actually kind of nice here because on some of the other systems like HP and Dell, they'll have their NVMe storage on the top of the motherboard, which means that if you have a GPU, like, you know, you're basically putting something on top of a hot component, which is an NVMe SSD. And so it's just not ideal, I don't think for like cooling, but I think this is actually a better layout than what Dell and HP use in terms of you know, their tiny mini micro systems. The other thing is that this system actually has two M.2 slots. So you could go put two SSDs in here. Some of the lower end Lenovo systems have the same kind of cutout, but they only have one of the two M.2 slots populated. So you can only put one NVMe SSD in this, but here you actually get two, which I think is actually kind of an awesome feature. Now, what you do lose with this GPU is that you would normally have a like two and a half inch SATA uh, like tray system here, which you don't get because, well, the GPU is in the way and there's no room for it. The other thing is that if you do have to ever switch out the Wi Fi, well, you'd have to go all the way down here and it's actually the Wi Fi card sits under the GPU. So you have to like kind of take out this entire assembly. It doesn't really take that long, but it's just something to keep in mind that it is a little bit harder to service the Wi Fi card here. But I just, I don't think that a lot of people are going to do that. So that's what it is. And this was a generation where we were just at that point where we we're starting to see the transition from like AC Wi Fi to Wi Fi 6. And so this does have the, I think the AX201, the Intel AX201, which is a Wi-Fi 6 chip. So we actually get some pretty nice little Wi-Fi on this. Okay. 
So let's just talk real quick about performance. So this system has the Intel Core i7-10700T, which is an eight core 16 thread processor. It can turbo, I think up to like 4.5 gigahertz, but the base clock is only two gigahertz. It's actually a little bit higher base clock than the 10 core model. Overall, this is pretty competitive with the Ryzen 4000 series if you wanna compare AMD to Intel. So this is pretty comparable to that, but the Ryzen 5000 series of course is actually considerably faster. And so I do think that if you want like maximum CPU performance, so you probably want to get a Ryzen based unit. Although I don't know if Lenovo actually has a think station that's Ryzen. I actually don't think they have one. So you'd have to go get something like the M75Q, I guess, or realistically, I'm just going to put it out here. The HP guys have the Elite Desk 800G, six and G8 minis. The G6 mini even had a NVIDIA GeForce 1660 Ti. And that's actually kind of cool because that's a much higher end, much faster GPU than we get in this with the P620. Frankly, that's just, that's something that's actually kind of, I guess, more fun than this is. This is really just for display outputs. And this is also the lowest GPU option that you can get. This is the P620, but there's also the P1000 and there's also a T1000 option. Now all three of those have four mini display port outputs, but you basically go from the two gigabytes of memory that we have, which basically is not a lot these days, up to four gigabytes with the P1000, and then you move to the newer generation architecture and eight gigabytes of memory on the T1000 card. So frankly, if I wanted something for like a performance GPU, because I really wanted to accelerate things like that, I probably would really look more towards that T1000 than the P620. And it's just, you know, that's just a feature that is newer technology but this really the point of the GPU here is 100% just to go provide extra display outputs. It is not really to go and like, if you're saying like, oh, I'd, I'd like to play a game. This is not that. If you want to go do some basic acceleration, um, there are definitely applications that take advantage of quadro drivers. And there are things that take advantage of like the media encoders and stuff like that that NVIDIA has. And so that you do get, I guess, with this, although they are older because, you know, we are definitely a couple generations beyond Pascal at this point. So just, I would look up all that kind of information if you are thinking about the P620 or P1000 and also just the T1000. I would just double check the specs in terms of what you're looking for and what this actually has. Okay, let's talk about power consumption. And I mentioned this earlier because there is something that is totally kind of different with this system than a lot of the other systems that we've seen. So this is a Lenovo P340 Tiny. This is the power adapter for the little box if you have even the low-end P620 GPU. Just to give you some sense of scale here, I mean, these things are like, this This power supply is like almost, is more than half the size, it feels like, of the, you know, just unit itself. So it's like you have two thirds actual system and like one third of the total thing is the power supply. This is absolutely huge. And in fact, I recently mentioned the fact that you could also get the HP Elite Desk 800G 6 Mini with like the 1660 Ti. That one, for example, actually uses a, I guess, a smaller, I think it has 150 watt power brick if you get the GPU option. We're actually gonna have the G8 version of that with the GPU that uh, is being recorded right now, but we haven't published it yet. So you'll see that soon, but this is just, I mean, this is a, giant power brick. I mean, it's huge, 230 watts. Now you're probably wondering how that translates into actual power consumption. Something that we saw that was a little different was just in terms of power consumption, it is much higher in this system than we have been seeing from the Project Tiny Mini Micro segment. Specifically, we are not seeing power consumption in that, you know, maybe nine to 13, 14 watt range with this system. This one really kind of the lower end of the power consumption, like we saw at idle was like somewhere in the 22, 23 watt range. But something that we did notice was that if we just let the system just sit there and go for a little while, the overall power consumption would actually creep up over time. And so if we let this thing just kind of sit idle for a little while, we actually saw that, I think maybe it was just a heat soak thing or something, but we actually saw that the overall idle power consumption would actually go up. And if we left it for like a day or two at idle, we would actually start getting into the 30 to maybe 33 watt range at idle. So it's definitely much higher. And that's something that we wouldn't have seen if we just kind of plugged it in and did a quick idle test. It's something that you had to like plug it in and just kind of watch the thing go up over time. And at the top end, we actually got the thing to go and push over 150 watts in our testing when we had it fully loaded and stuff. So, I mean, frankly, can you get this thing up to a pretty high power output? I mean, you definitely can. So I can understand 
understand why Lenovo actually went with the big honking 230 watt power brick because I mean, this system actually uses quite a bit. The other thing is that, especially when you start getting over, you know, maybe 60 to 80 watts of power consumption, the fans in the system really start to spin up and you definitely start to hear it. So at idle, it's, yeah, there's a little bit of fan noise, but it's not really too, too bad, even in that, you know, like 30 watt range, once it starts getting a little heat soak. I think Lenovo does a good job of fan management there. But when you start getting that thing loaded up, I mean, you can definitely hear some of those that fan noise. And that's just frankly, the fact that you have so much power consumption in such a small package that, well, you know, you got to move airflow through the chassis to cool everything because you don't want things to overheat. And when you do that, it creates more noise. And so these are much noisier than some of the other systems that we've seen where you basically just have a CPU, you don't have a GPU, and you're just not cooling as much. Especially with the Intel parts, they are a little bit uh, warmer in these systems than we are seeing the AMD parts, especially in the Ryzen 5, 4000 and 5000 series. So I would definitely say the power consumption in this is, even though it's a small system, it's not necessarily small in terms of power consumption. One of the tiny features that you're going to see that we have the Core i7 with vPro. So this system actually does support vPro out of the box. Just something to keep in mind that that is a feature and this one supports it if you do want to go down the vPro route for manageability. However, while this has the vPro sticker, that is a feature that is not on the entire range. So definitely double check if you're looking at, you know, processors that the processor that you want to choose also supports vPro if that's a system feature that you want. And also, even if it the processor does support vPro, in theory, you can get these systems or some companies will get these systems with vPro turned off because they do not want that remote manageability. And if that's the case and you were to buy that like secondhand, you could have a system that in theory should support vPro, but it actually doesn't support vPro. So with vPro, always double check and make sure that the system that you're purchasing supports it if that's a feature that you want. So for all of these Project Tiny Mini Micro videos, I have key lessons learned. And for this video, I was kind of thinking about it. I was like, man, what was it? What is my key lesson learned for the P340 Tiny? And I think my key lesson learned is that this is something that I think is interesting because it does have a discrete GPU. And that's something that we get asked about all the time in these Project Tiny Mini Micro node reviews. People are asking like, can I get a DGPU? Can I add one later? I think that if you do want a DGPU, I would strongly suggest that you go and you get a unit that already supports it. Lenovo actually uses a kind of more standard just riser and PCIe connector instead of a proprietary connector, which I actually really like. At the same time though, I do kind of feel like the P620 is really showing its age. I mean, it's it's that's that's many generations ago. And I just personally feel like I would have liked to see like the, you know, like a Turing, at least as our kind of like minimum base level of a system in this generation. Now, of course it is a little bit older, so time has moved on, but at the same time, I, I do kind of feel like a P620 is just kind of that lower end, really just for display port outputs. But if you do want a better GPU and you know better performing system, I actually do think that the HP Elite Desk 805 G8 Mini is actually a kind of better option. I mean, we have that with an eight core AMD Ryzen 5000 series processor, as well as we have a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti GPU. And I think that that CPU plus the GPU combination frankly is a lot better than what we're getting here with Lenovo. Now it definitely costs more, so it's something that you are paying more for, but on the other hand, that thing kind of feels more like what I think a lot of folks are asking, like, you know, can we get one of these things that if I just want to do some casual gaming and I want something that's not like an integrated GPU, I want something that's a discrete GPU for a little better performance, like, you know, what should I get? I actually think that that is going to be a better option than something like this. I know we have had readers that have gotten, gone out and gotten like the P620 and you're playing some kind of easy games or just doing some little media encoding or you're, you're using something like Adobe and you just need some kind of, you know, acceleration just by having a CUDA based GPU then sure, I guess the P620 is okay. But at the same time, I think that there are better options out there and spending a little bit more money can get you a new system with warranty and some better features. So just to me, that's something that I would definitely keep in mind as a key lesson learned when we reviewed this system. As you can tell, we definitely have a lot more of these coming out soon. And we also have separated out a new series, which is not Project Tiny Mini Micro, but it's just kind of looking at mini PCs. And so we have that series that we are starting up on the STH main site and on YouTube as well. So definitely check that out. But if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.